Really excited to be with you for this one with David Brisson. I'm Donnie Barnes, and we're excited because these are two teams that love to attack in waves with lots of speed. This is going to be a lot of fun today. Absolutely. And now here's a break in. Crookshank for the hat trick. Stopped by Fanti. Rebound, score. Slavin following up, and it's 3 0 CC. Slides it to Savoy. Savoy shoots and missed the short side. Off the end wall, they score. Tic tac toe. And the Pioneers tie it on the power play. Cole Gutman makes it 3 3. Roth with a neat sidestep. Here's an odd man rush. Roth, low height, buries it. Comes free back to Brodzinski. Lee plays the body on him. Miller tries to turn it back and does to Mittenen. Mittenen into the slot and scores. He comes right back after the mistake a moment ago and gives St. Cloud the lead on the power play. Let's go to the second period in Omaha. Western with that one nothing lead on the goal by Luke Granger. Came at just 250 of period one. Western in the black and gold, skating from right to left across your screen in period two. And Granger right to work, dropping to Adderd. And they score! It bobbled home, and it's 2-0 Western right from the jump. Well, Donnie, they beat me to it. I was going to say that Western Michigan needs to bring the same type of energy that they brought at the beginning of the first period. And I mean, they just jumped on Denver right away. And again, good patience. Granger just finding uh, his defenseman to come in with a nice slap shot. And again, some traffic in front of the net. And uh, I think it just hit a body to go in, actually. We'll take a replay. Washi just standing there. I'm not sure if it hit uh, Denver's defenseman. but. Again, what a nice shot on net, and what a good patience down low by Granger. Looked like it might have gone in off anti tool Misto. Not quite sure, but the goal is Ronnie Adderds at 13 seconds of the second period. Well, now a real test for Denver, Davey, because we talked about how well they played generally in the first period, just couldn't get the puck to go in the net yet again. And then to give up another goal 13 seconds into period two, that's another real gut punch. It is, and you know, normally when you have 16 shots on net, you more than likely you end up with a goal. But again, Austin Kane has been playing well. Every time he's, he puts the pads on, he's been improving since the beginning of the season, which is very reassuring because Donnie, when you're your young team, you really rely on your number one goalie to keep you in the game. And Austin Kane right now is improving every time he, he steps on the ice. And again, nice shot. Little maybe help from Denver there to put that in. But again, that's this would not happen unless you throw the puck on net, right? And it was a nice shot and crashing the net by Washi forced the defenseman to push that in. Face off win sets up a Bennett one timer that hit traffic. Brett Van Oz scored a goal on a big ricochet yesterday. He's hunting around for another there. Van Oz like, likes to score, apparently, because he's got four goals, zero assists. <laughs> he's a goal scorer. And again, if you're one of Denver's coaches here, you got to be telling your team, look, a lot of games still left. Let's stay patient, not force things, right? Absolutely. And a lot of times what coaches will do is they'll break down a, per a, per a period in four parts, right? They'll break them down in five-minute parts. So you say, hey, guys, let's just focus on the first five minutes. Let's just win the first five. Let's, let's go back to basics. Now it's 2 nothing. I get it. But, hey, let's put that behind us, focus on, our, for the, first, on the next five minutes, and that's all you can, that's all you can do. Well, they take a penalty there. You hear Yako Hakenen taking two for cross-checking. Well, that's not part of a speech from a coach, right? No, no. <laughs> After you allow our goals, hey, last, last thing you want to do is take a penalty. But again, it's part of the game, and uh, Denver has been fairly efficient on the PK this year. I mean, I know they want to keep improve that number up a little bit. But again, Western Michigan having a chance here on the power play, and let's see how they can do. Big face-off win for the Pios there as they're able to clear. Those initial face-offs at the start of a power play, so important. And here comes Passolt, gaining the line. Banks to Fulp, lost it for a moment, able to 
curl it deep, but taken in by N.T. Tuomisto. And a stretch pass, and here's Durflinger in behind. And Kane with a stick save. What a nice feed from all the way back to almost the goal line. And again, Austin Kane with the key uh, kick save. Again, utilizing his right leg. To your point, he might get a little bruise after uh, underneath that pad after the game. <laughs> now Poland steals the puck. Joyel chose not to shoot. Adderd does, but a good stick check by Barrow. And it's deflected to center. That was a great sequence there for Ryan Barrow. Pursues Joyo behind the net. Joyo stays strong. Glover. Off the stick of Granger, but takes a kind bounce for Western Michigan. Warad. Cycling to Ty Glover. 35 left in this Minkota Windows power play for Western Michigan. It's Kane has to settle it down. Again, plenty of time. You have 30 seconds. You get one more rush. On the power play, you just got to be patient. Don't rush anything. Just come in, establish your power play. But not really, right? Yep, turned over to Barrel. Good drop pass. Here comes McCade Webster. Just ridden off the puck before he could shoot. One last rush on the power play. Glover. Has to drop it for Rome just off the bench. Denver hollering for too many men. I think they're going to get it. Yes, indeed. Penalty against Western Michigan. Just as the Denver penalty expired. Uh, now it's the Pioneers' turn to go to the power play. Again, it's all about timing. Ty Glover had the puck entering the zone, and uh, Western Michigan was going through a change, and he did a little drop pass. And by doing that, uh, Western Michigan touched the puck right away, and too many guys were on the ice. Again, this is an opportunity for, for Denver to establish their power play just uh, and get back into this game. Like, again, the only time that Western Michigan really gives an opportunity for the opponent to get back in the game is by a lack of discipline. They always allow them to get back on the power play, and uh, it cost them a few goals yesterday against Omaha, and now they just have to focus on uh, getting this off. And Denver looking for their first goal in five periods and nearly had it there as it was tipped over the bar by Cole Gutman on the redirect and out of play. Again, so far, Denver moving the puck well on the power play. I think the second unit was very efficient uh, early on the power play in the first period. But again, uh, don't try to do too much. Just move the puck tape to tape. Then once you have a shooting opportunity, take it. But just make sure you have a good net front presence. Second Minkota Windows power play of the game for the Pioneers. And here is Benning dropping to Gutman, who flashed it just wide. Now Webster back passes to Benning at the line. Benning wristing one. That bobbled just outside the far post. Boy, those redirects and caroms. Just a couple inches off for Denver so far. Savoy swings and shanks a one-timer. Still they keep it alive. Webster, Benning, pull, shoots. Save made, rebound. Another stop by Kane as he saved from Olashevsky in tight. And Olashevsky, we just talked about net front presence. He's doing a great job at parking himself just a foot away from Kane, and that way he tried to block his vision, and so far he's doing great. Savoy, deflected by Fulp. Western Michigan can't get out. Back to the line it goes. Savoy steps and shoots, pad stop, and then scooped off the ice by Kane. And Austin Kane continues to single-handedly keep Denver out. 21 shots on goal for the Pioneers already, but still no goals. Again, earlier in the pot, Austin Kane was a little shaky in the first two games, but right now, just playing with a lot of confidence. Making a key save, not allowing a rebound. Again, you're, you have Carter Savoy with, just about to take a nice wrist shot a few feet away from you. Just playing with confidence. And I'm amazed how this, this goaltender went from a kind of a shaky, low-confidence guy now uh, established himself as a number, number one goalie, and uh, he's, it's only going to get better as the season progresses. Still another 42 left on this Minkota Windows power play for Denver. Tipped down low, stick checked away by Kane, and couldn't be kept in by Tuo Misto, and Van Oz almost created a breakaway. And now he does break in shorthanded, trying to drop it to the trailing Warad, and Denver regroups. Pass didn't connect with Barrow and can be sent back down by Cale Bennett. Hot, hot. 
Carried ahead by Antti Tuomisto. Headmans to Jandrick. Now bank to the line. Edwards. Edwards shoots and scores. May have redirected right in front. Ryan Barrow was standing on the doorstep. Denver finally has their first goal in five periods just as the penalty expired. It's two to one. Now you can finally uh, excel because uh, if it goes, <laughs> it's been too long since we, they saw a goal. But again, we talked about net front presence. Barrow was parking himself right in front of Kane. And Jack Durant, uh, no, number 28 here. Edwards, nice little wrist shot for his second goal of the season. Again, it was, that was not a good angle shot from where he took the shot, like right towards the wall. But again, when you have a big body parked in front of the goalie, just throw the puck on net. Yep. Goal is Brett Edwards, so apparently was not redirected. So in their 23rd shot on net, Denver finally gets one to go. And this is icing against Western Michigan. Again, Western Michigan has had a tendency over the last few games just to come out flying out of the, the locker room, right? The first couple of minutes, they just bring a lot of energy, constant pressure, uh, but they always find a way to allow them to get back in the game by taking a penalty. And I know it was addressed uh, to the team after last game. It's like, guys, you, you cannot, especially having a young team, you can't put yourself in a shorthanded situation all the time, or at least allow the other team to, to get on the power play. There's Cole Gallant, stick checked by Olashevsky. Good play. But yeah, that whole sequence started, didn't it, Davey, when Western took that too many men on the ice penalty at the tail end of their power play. A little drop pass in front of their own bench. When they're playing in their barn in Kalamazoo, as here's Olashevsky breaking in, headman pass, and a great stick lift. That was Josh Passolt. But back in the slot it comes and sent over the top by Olashevsky, chopped that side of the goal. Now Gutman fans on a one-timer, and Denver buzzing, looking for that equalizer, not yet. Had to be played by the goaltender, wiping out icing. And Adderd almost had it roll to him, but here's speed for Hank Crone. Up and down they go. Crone breaks in. Crone dropping. Trailer. Oh, deflects just over the top. There's Adderd again with the stick check. May have saved a goal. And he wore it off that right hand. He's feeling that. That one whistles over the top from Griffin Mendel. Relentless pressure by Denver, then another penalty taken by Western Michigan as Washi sent Webster flying face first into the boards. And more power play time coming to the Pioneers when we come back. Edwards has broken the ice for Denver, it's two to one.